And uh, the last speaker for today is Andrei Shilnikov with his talk, Leonid Shilnikov and Mathematical Theory of Dynamical Chaos. No, not only for today, for uh, our conference <laughs> last week. Yes, for this conference. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm going to make it full screen. And... All right. Okay, first of all, it's not my talk only. I'm just a presenter. <laughs> all right. So, uh, again, and, and it's based upon the, the recent paper that we just submitted um, the, the other day. Um, so, it's uh, Sergei Gonchon Kalosh Kazakov, Dim Turecht, myself. So, as I said, I'm just a presenter. And what I'm, I'll try to do today, I'll try to illustrate uh, what the uh, scientific heritage of my dad is, right? Using some examples, right? And then I have to apologize immediately that, for example, I'm not going to talk uh, about uh, homogeneous tangencies or, or, or about homoclinic tori, so level, sorry, right? And it's just not, it's not my business, right? It's not my call. So I'm pretty sure that Sergei Vadim should talk about homoclinic tangencies more. So this is just, uh, again, this is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the very first paper in a, the special issue that was dedicated to Leonid Schellenkel's scientific heritage. And we would, I mean, on behalf of the uh, editors or guest editors of, the, of this issue, we would like to thank uh, everyone who contributed to, to this special volume. And we are absolutely sure that Leonid would have enjoyed your contribution as well. Okay, so we, thank you. So um, <clears throat> uh, again, this is uh, what you see here in, in front of you is, is another titanic work done mostly by, again, Sergei and uh, Leonid Belakov. So it's a, it's, it's a volume, it's a collection of some of the Leonid's uh, papers that um, were published in Russian, right? So if you don't have this volume, I, I do suggest that grab it or bag Sergei, right? While they still exist, right? Unless you're gonna enjoy the PDF only. And my suggestion also for all, for us, for all of us that let's try to get it published in English one day. And uh, I need to think about the copyright, maybe they expired already. So we don't have to translate, we don't have to retype the papers, but just use the PDFs and request them from the publishers. Okay, like American Math Society and so forth and so on. Okay, it's a, it's a titanic, titanic work and it's a great looking book. Okay, so uh, when I uh, started uh, preparing this talk, I went over some old records. I looked at the old books that I have, including my dad's PhD uh, thesis and his doctor of science thesis, right? and his private correspondence with some folks, including Anosov. And I'm gonna talk about this at the very end of, 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 this, of this presentation. So I'm gonna publicly, for the first time, announce some of the, some of the letters that they exchanged back then at the time. So you will see that they're just like, you know, loving birds, right? How they talk to each other. I don't have my dad's letters, of course, right? Because they went to Anosov, but I have Anosov, uh, and lots of letters to my dad. Okay, and uh, when he turned 50 right here on this, in this picture, right, we had a party at my mom's place. I was surprised, surprised. And then the, the guys, they presented the collection of Leonid's publication by that time. So he was 50, like we, we talked about 84. And this is also the collection of the PhD thesis of his students, right? You can see them, this guy, I mean, Surprise, surprise myself, I realized that mm, Vadim is playing piano. <laughs> and then I realized, it's oh, not the piano, it's just a, it's a terminal, right? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see that. that Alec Marozov, Valera Lukyanov, Sereja Gonchenke, uh, Angel Lova, uh, then Kolya Gavrilov, Valya Framovic. I wish I knew why he, he's in that pose. If Lowe may comment on that, that would be great. Then Leonie Belikov, apparently that these are his hand drawings. And Sasha Bautin, I mean, again, Bautin, could I mean, I mean point. And then that at the age of 50, right? And he has already uh, what's called the salt and paper hair, 
gray hair. Okay, so let's move on. All right, that's my starting point. So let me see how I can get rid of the of the. Uh, okay, so I'm, I need to talk to mom about how old he is on this picture, right? And maybe Lola knows, right? But uh, I guess this is the either uh, just freshly established Institute for Applied Mathematics, or maybe it's still a physical technical institute, right? And then he's my, this. My dad is here, right? And and he's standing behind Andronov's wife, Eugen Sanna. And I don't know what he's thinking, but maybe he's thinking something like that. Damn it, this relay stupid systems, right? Let me focus on pure mathematics, and let me try to generalize what uh, Leontovich and her husband Andronov did. So let me create the theory of this hemoclinic uh, bifurcations, right? Just uh, and that's what he did, right? At, at that time, he was what, 25 years old, 26. So he, de he defended his PhD at the age of, I was born in 62, right? So maybe it's 62. So he was 28 years old at that time. Okay. So yeah, that's what I'm, I guess, we can only guess what he was thinking at that moment, right? But very likely, like, he hated this uh, piecewise linear system. And he wanted to do something uh, really that mathematically was worth. All right, that's, that's okay. All right, so that's that's that uh, his picture back then, and that was the first result. In uh, this is the original paper. It was uh, became later on one of the one, the first chapter of his PhD thesis. Right, and then he considered again the cell node bifurcation. Right, so that's a local. Picture, right? And then what if it has what's called uh, this homoclinic, uh, appendix homoclinic orbit, right? And at that time, and then he, I mean, again, we talked about this uh, with Dima and Gonya and Sirioja uh, when we uh, brought that paper article, right? Preface, uh, what we should say. And we decided again, it was a debate that Leonid himself uh, set up his problem of generalization. Uh, and then he, again, at that time, the, the technique uh, that was applicable to high dimensional multi-dimensional system was not, didn't exist at that time. So he had to develop the new technique, new approaches, boundary value problems and so forth and so on, because all previous proofs in a, in a two-dimensional surfaces that relied heavily on, uh, on the properties of dynamical systems in a plane on, on two-dimensional surfaces. So that was first result. And that's the second result, okay. Uh, then he considered the homoclinic bifurcation of the saddle in case when this, this uh, so-called saddle value is negative, right? And he proved that uh, the, using the Banach uh, construction principles that uh, this bifurcation would give rise to the uh, single stable periodic orbit, okay? So picture on the left, that's my dad, that's myself, right? And then my uh, sister looks at me, not very friendly really, right? But kind of like, what are you doing? Uh, two important messages. Every time I, I come to the, uh, used to be in Snowbird meetings on applied dynamical system, and when people talk about these bifurcations, right, then uh, homoclinic saddle mode, and <clears throat> they call them sneak, uh, some, I'm sorry, right, some stupid names like sniper, and, and nobody really acknowledges uh, I mean, these results became a folklore. So it basically means that nobody acknowledges the uh, original author of, of this uh, of these bifurcation phenomena, right? Especially for, for the systems uh, in dimension three and higher, okay? And uh, people always argue, oh, that's a sneak. I mean, if it's sneak, I mean, sneak it means cell node invariant circle, right? You're not on the S1, right? You're on a three-dimensional, high-dimensional space, okay? So you have to re reference properly the original work, right? You don't reference textbook like Fondegras, like Strogitz. Okay, then um, as the next step, and that was a part of his, his uh, doctor of science thesis that um, he put together, but again, he never got a degree because of the, I mean, you, you know the story well. Okay, so the, the first chapter, the first chapter in a thesis was, uh, he considered what's called a, Schilling of saddle saddle or Schilling of saddle mode. So these are original drawings, by the way, let me just comment on that. I was surprised to find that, I mean, typically at back at that time, 
none of the, none, none of his papers was illustrated right none of the papers contained any figures so that was really really for, for me surprised to find that he he published these figures in 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 these original papers right i i didn't think about that because all other public his publications they didn't contain a single figure and i do know that some people really complained like colin sparrow told me that it was very difficult for him to follow uh Shilnikov's work on a, on a saddle focus on a saddle cell because they didn't the papers didn't contain any any illustrations right any geometry of how it works so <clears throat> this is from his uh his head drawings so he considered the uh it's a local bifurcation when you have saddle here and saddle they have different uh topological types one two and two one meaning that okay one has two-dimensional stable on manifold whether the other one has two-dimensional unstable manifold and then they merge and the question was like what's going to happen if these are uh, these are uh, trajectory that connects this saddle saddle and the result was that depending on the number of connections okay so in case when it's a single uh connection then the, the dis disappearance of the saddle mode will uh will end up in in, in a, the emergence of the single saddle periodic orbit right but in case so that's just another illustration right that's my sketch and that's how sergey uh illustrated his vision of this uh uh saddle saddle bifurcation also known as a shrink of saddle mode so you're going to get just a single periodic orbit saddle periodic orbit after that but in case when the connection has there are more than one connection like in this case I will, i'll try to uh picture how the two connections uh could could uh, occur in the system right so you, as you can see the stable manifold it kind of bends and crosses the unstable manifold at two points and each point corresponds to a, a periodic orbit saddle periodic orbit then uh uh as the saddle node disappears there will be a a, a, a hyperbolic subset that is uh Topological equivalent to the suspension of the Bernoulli, Bernoulli subshift on two or uh, n uh, symbols depending on the number of connections. So if you have three connections, then it's going to be a uh, three symbol Bernoulli's uh, shift law. Okay, so again, that's uh, how we envision this saddle node bifurcation in case of two connections. All right, so. It's a very interesting result, however, and uh, there are no many known examples, right, in applications when the saddle mode uh, may occur. So this example on the left, uh, uh, Paul Glendening and Colin Sparrow played with this uh, example. So basically, they, they, their idea was that, okay, we pick up some kind of lotus-like system, so these are cell at the origin, and then we're going to add up another equation in Z. So we make we add the quadratic term to the Z equation because Z is invariant uh, curve, right? And then we will get another stable. Uh, so we can uh, manage that two equilibrium states will merge and disappear, and then we have this hemoclinic orbit, and then you're going to get basically a hyperbolic subset without without the saddle, which 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 is going to make it hyperbolic attractive, but it it Again, it's it's a, it's a good it's a good try. The problem is that uh, that trajectory that approach the z axis they they're going to run away to infin negative infinity along the z axis because there is no upper there is no lower bound anymore. The second example uh, it, it was a paper published by again Leonard, and um, it, it's. It's unclear to me whether this result is, I mean, again, this is a true illustration of the subtle, subtle, McLean cell cell bifurcation, right? But it's a nice try. It was published in uh, PRL. At that time, PRL was very generous, right? I, they published my papers around that time and that never published after. Uh, but again, it's, I have reasonable doubts, even though Yuri Kuznetsov, that he thinks that th this result is correct. Okay, so the the second part of his uh, PhD, not PhD, sorry, uh, Doctor for Science uh, thesis was about uh, hemoclinic bifurcation of the saddle in case when the saddle quantity is positive. So 
So you have two negative eigenvalues, one positive, and the sum of these two is positive. Again, this is not example of, of, of a Falkler. So when people only refer to his original publication when they talk about the dimension two bifurcations, and we're going to talk about this. But okay, but in general case, and let me just say in a few seconds, right, what general I mean, but uh, then uh, the, this homoclinic bifurcation will result in the emergence of the settle, single cell periodic orbit, but there are some exceptions. And we're going to talk about exceptions. And one exception is that, uh, for example, uh, it's, 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 it's not really that case, but kind of borderline case when the settle quantity, the settle value is positive, right? Or which settle index is one, what we call the resonance settle. Okay, then it, the situation is more interesting. Second number two, case number two is uh, <clears throat> what we call the zero settle uh, separatrix value, also known as the inclination switch case. Okay, so the idea is that this manifold is no longer transfers to the stable manifold, but tangent, right? We're going to talk about this more. So basically what happens is that uh, at the bifurcation, uh, at the result of this bifurcation, the saddle that has orientable uh, kind of loop now switches to, or they don't say switch, switches to non-orientable. So this is a mere band. So that's the second case. And the, the, the third case, called, I mean, that we, we called uh, when separatrix, instead of uh, entering the saddle along the leading direction, right, it for some reasons, it changes its mind and come, come, comes back to the saddle along the strongest stable direction. Okay, now in the West, uh, this bifurcation is known as orbit flip. And the point is that in, in these two cases, right, then the, the dynamics, you, you should get, I mean, you may get more than uh, a single cell periodic orbit, but again, hyperbolic subset mean by. Okay, and um, that's kind of funny, right? This shouldn't be here. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to the slide. I misplaced it. So, and, 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 and the, the point basically uh, is the following, right? Then when you have the homoclinic orbit, right? In the case of inclination switch or orbit of flip, which they're, they are equivalent in terms of uh, the outcome. What happens is that the, uh, you transition from orientable to non-orientable case. I mean, that's how it looks locally, but again, if you look at the larger portion of the cross section, then this hook, right? This uh, wedge is gonna move up like this, right? Because again, due to, I mean, due to continuity, right? It will be continuous, something like this. Okay, so you're gonna get the hooks like that. And, and, the, and the idea is that depending on the eigenvalues of the saddle, then, uh, this 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 the 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 size of that hook right can be shorter than the original interval right which means that which can mean that uh, result in the fact that you're going to have stable orbits nearby this case right because of this hook and because of the contraction but again if that uh, subtle index is less than one then you're gonna you're gonna get a chaotic subset just around one loop so you don't need a, a subtle focus right it can be just a subtle uh, itself, right? But then you transition uh, through, I mean, either through inclusion switch to orbit flip bifurcation, right? And you can get uh, comfortably many cellular periodic orbits nearby. Okay. And the 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 true value of this result is that uh, today, uh, Misha Malkin mentioned that, or this paper of, it's actually not a paper, it's just a short note. It's based upon the uh, the results that he uh, presented in at the meeting. Then, if you have two homoclinic orbits, right, and then you have these conditions, either inclination switch, right, in this particular case, or when sigma is zero, then uh, he he basically uh, argued that uh, the, the Lorentz attractor may emerge right from that point, which is because I mentioned two point, which is corresponds to the resonant uh, saddle or uh, saddle that has this uh, inclination flip, uh, inclination or inclination switch bifurcation right there. Okay, these examples, I mean, again, taken from my work. This is actually Simoa did this picture, right, if I'm not mistaken, Sh just showing that, as you can see, uh, chaos emerges right from that little point over here. Okay, 
and so is so is uh, true over here. But again, this this situation is more complicated because the saddle index in this in the beginning is greater than one half, which means if you double it, right? If you look at the second part of the this map, if you double it, then uh, this uh, this exponent is greater than one, which means you have stability plus. Again, you have the zero derivative. But again, it's I don't want to go into details. And I always wanted to find the, the example of uh, inclination switch on a primary homoclinic orbit, not on a double loop like in the Schmitz and Marioka. And this picture is taken from our recent paper on a, one particular uh, model of a nonlinear laser, which is which is very very cool stuff, really, right? And these are these are the bifurcation diagrams of of from that nonlinear optics model. But the 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 point here is to show that. Everything starts at, at these points, which is inclination flip. And this is actually a transition from uh, figure eight to homoclinic butterfly, right? So it's kind of kind of a uh, change of deleting direction. Okay. And that this is also inclination flip point. As you can see, all starts from here, right? And of course, right, he knew the theory at this point, but how this uh the global unfolding uh, get together, it, nobody knows this, right? That, that was our attempt to answer this question. Right, and that's an old story. How this uh, could dimension to hemoglobin bifurcation shape the uh, overall uh, unfolding of the system? Okay. All right. So, okay. Now we arrived at the, uh, the result. It is not a folklore anymore. Right. This is called Schilling of saddle focus, and the case is that when you have uh, when basically the pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues, right is nearest to the imaginary axis, right? Or you have two pairs, then uh, the existence of a single homoclinic orbit implies that there are countably many cellular periodic orbits nearby some kind of a, like a cloud, right? And basically in the West, we would just say that you have a countably many small horseshoe, not just a single one, but countably many small horseshoe. And again, this is just a hand drawing of, of Leonid, right? Basically showing uh, what, how he, uh, illustrated the fact that the, the presence of the homoclinic orbit implies countably many small horseshoes. Okay, and this is taken from uh, uh, from Schoolopedia. Again, uh, cross section, right? Uh, then saddle focus or spot this this stable uh, manifold makes it uh, what's called sometimes uh, homoclinic snake, which is not definitely a good name. But bottom line is that depending on the eigenvalues, right? So when uh, the saddle, the contraction is stronger than expansion, then that spiral kind of made of, of soft metal, right? So it doesn't want to expand. And this is just made of uh, stainless steel, like in you know, the old uh, clocks, right? So that it wants to expand. And as you can see, it, it shows that uh, several uh, small horseshoes, this green, blue, and red one, and so forth and so on. Uh, for, for folks who like one-dimensional maps, right, if you look from, from the side, right, then you're going to see something like this, right? And it, basically this uh, pr proves that the presence of the existence of the homoclinic orbit implies that the, the system has countably many uh, uh, periodic orbits nearby, but also due to these tangencies, right? If I shoot this up and down, clearly I'm going to get the tangency, I'm going to get stable orbits. And that's the main reason Okay, and I go back to this slide that shouldn't be here. Right? It, it basically the main reason why if you have a, a Schillinger saddle focus, then regardless of the system, at least in 3D, you're going to have the stability windows nearby everywhere, right? And they are uncontrollable. So basically, whenever you see the solid color, that means something is stable here, a stable periodic orbit. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and and not only are you going to have a countably many periodic orbits, but also nearby you, you will see countably many uh, homoclinic orbits, secondary homoclinic orbits. And this is the, the 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 reason I have this slide, not because I want to, uh, is that um, when, I guess, that was the second time when Leonid traveled abroad, uh, then uh, nice folks at University of Libre, you'll, you'll be in Free University of Brussels, right? They managed to um, uh, organize a workshop uh, honoring Lenny's contribution to the dynamical system, as it was called. And uh, many people came to Brussels to present, and 
mostly applications. And I remember my dad and then Dima knows this well, right? And he was kind of wondering why nobody extended his theory, right? It looks like it was just a complete story. And there were just a few attempts to, to, to extend the theory, for example, to understand how the bifurcational foldings looks like, right? In this particular case, right? And then um, this is just a now numerical answer to this, uh, to this question, okay? So, but bottom line, the meaning of Shilnikov uh, settle focus is that uh, nearby, okay, you have a hyperbolic subset, but it doesn't have to be an attractor, but you have to make it attractor. And this is just examples uh, taken from uh, Lawrence 84. Again, this is what's called Shilnikov meets uh, Hopf on the run of bifurcation, right? Or another example of heteroclean connection of two settle forces, right? This is taken from the, uh, uh, this is, this is from the Russell model. And this is from, again, Lawrence, as you can see again, in the Lawrence case, these are showing a settled focus involved. And as soon as you've got that, and given that Lawrence uh, model is three-dimensional with constant negative divergence, it means if you have this configuration, you have stable orbits nearby. And we're gonna talk about this too, right? And that's what I meant by illust say, illustrating, by saying that uh, if you have a primary loop nearby, you have double loop, triple loops, Right? If system is symmetric, you have multiple configurations and they all come in pairs. That's why the bifurcation curves has a U shape. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, move forward. Okay, so 10 years later, when Bert turned 60, again, his students uh, presented him another collection of his papers by that time. So it was welcome edition. And at that time, uh, he already published results on the Lawrence attractor over here, right? And then, uh, uh, and then he, his, his mind basically focused on, on, on global picture, pictures relating to how dynamical chaos emerges through what, through what sequence of bifurcation and whether we can find a simple bifurcation that would immediately imply, uh, chaos in the system. Right. And then he started thinking of like, uh, again, why spiral chaos is so, uh, frequently observed in, in, in diverse applications. Dima mentioned this today, right? And then uh, uh, we're gonna talk about the Taurus bifurcation, Lawrence attract the blue sky. And I'm not gonna talk about wild case, I'll just illustrate. So let's talk about uh, what the, the global scenarios, right? Dima mentioned already today that, so originally you, ha you have a, a stable, stable equilibrium state that has spiral, uh, this is spiral, right? And then it loses stability through the uh, supercritical and run of hub bifurcation. So what you can see here, this unstable manifold kind of uh, winds onto the uh, periodic orbit right here. And that periodic orbit, it either undergoes period doubling bifurcation or it loses stability through the torus bifurcation. That's why we're gonna talk about torus and then torus breaks down. And, and again, I, I wanted to ask Dima what he thinks, uh, why it's torus versus period doubling. And I guess he, he kind of knows the answer depends on the, on the frequency of the saddle focus, right? If it's high, then you're gonna get period doubling. When it's low, you're gonna, very likely you're gonna get torus instead. And this is again, this picture is taken from Lawrence 84. I mean, at that time, it's kind of interesting how I echoed my dad's uh, uh, phenological constructions, right? So. Uh, that's it's my first try uh, with that model. And basically I, I want to illustrate that you have this scenario and then as the uh, kind of the convergence to either whatever is going on up here weakens, right? Then a stable manifold becomes tangent to this incoming direction, right? And then you're gonna have homoclinic orbit, right? Even though you still have the original periodic orbit, which is already unstable, right? And then this will result in chaotic dynamics like in the Lorentz 84, but interesting enough that in Lorentz 84 model, this is actually chaotic repeller. So what you see here is a, a, a chaotic attract in the backward time, right? And the same, the same configuration uh, uh, was found. I know that Ashura is here in his uh, hair cell model, right? So as you can see the settle focus, right? and then it loses stability and then the, uh, the whirlpool forms, right? And soon you're gonna get this chaotic spiking activity, right? And another example of what we call Fitzhugh-Nagur-Marinzel model, right? 
uh, as you can see, it's the same story, right? And on the fold, you have a torus bifurcation. So I guess we're going to talk about tori next. Okay, so um, as I said, uh, I will try to, I'll, I'll talk about blue sky catastrophe, right? And then I'm going to leave this apart, right? Maybe Dima one day will uh, review this in details. Okay, so um, speaking of torus, right? The historically, uh, this, this, the, the, the story begins with the uh, Van der Poel, Balthasar Van der Poel result on, on periodically forced uh, Van der Poel equation or generator, right? And then, and, then, and we try to answer the question is uh, what's going to happen, right? How, I mean, the, it's a synchronization issue, right? When the frequencies get locked, phase locked or frequency locked, right? And then they showed using some truncated uh, Van der Poel equation that eventually the problem reduces to the following case, right? You have a, again, say Andronov Hope bifurcation, right? So this focus becomes unstable and then you have a stable limit cycle. And then on a limit cycle, you have a saddle node. That's what's called a sneak nowadays, right? Uh, you have a saddle node on an invariant circle and then that uh, saddle node splits into a saddle and into, uh, into a saddle and to a stable equilibrium state. And this would mean that you have a resonant torus, right? That has a stable periodic orbit on it. So, and this would occur within this uh, synchronization zone, okay? I mean, again, I know it's a cliche, but known as the Arnold Town, okay? And then uh, uh, what Andronov and Witt, again, and I just picked it, the sentence from one of the papers. I was looking for the original paper and I found this. It's with, uh, some, uh, after some time, Witt and Haken, experimentally <laughs> confirmed <laughs> the mathematical theory, right? We, I know that some of you just, I mean, smiling because we, we uh, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a joke when Vadim Anishinka came to land. Hey, it's, not, it's not smiling because uh, they have averaged system, but uh, they no, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean that. I mean, again, experimentally confirmed. Uh, when yeah. Vadim Anishin came to my dad and said uh, that we we experimentally confirmed your theory, right? That again, the theory it doesn't need to be confirmed, right? Experimentally, because it's a, it's already a theoretical result, right? So you don't confirm it. You can illustrate that, but it's not confirm. That's and why I, when I, I put emphasis upon this confirmed. No, very fine. Effect. They can confirmed conclusions, not the theory. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. but I mean, you, you, you see, know so what I mean. So written <laughs> conclusions are confirmed. Yeah, 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 but you know what I mean by that, right? You don't say we verified your mathematical theory, right? You just say that we illustrated it. No. Okay, it's, it's a, your it's point, right? Lova, Lova, it's your point, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yourself. <laughs> uh, so what, what maybe Arkasha knows this better than me, right? The, if I'm not mistaken, again, this news shouldn't be here. Okay, they considered everything up to this level. If I'm not mistaken, it was something like a or square root of a over, no, it's a over square root of 27. If I'm not mistaken, that level. Arkady, do you remember that? Not really numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, again, I think it was from the, I mean, I remember this, this my students' time that 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 number somehow it just popped up in my in my memory, and and I list I mean I, I uh, went through the uh, bifurcation uh, the uh, selection theory book yesterday, but again it's, it's eight hundred pages, and again Leva speaking of you and Grisha, uh, you didn't even mention that book when you presented when you presented your vision of Andronov mathematical uh, heritage, right? So they didn't and, include the theory in their book. Yeah, maybe they didn't. They didn't. Mm -hmm. They didn't. I, I was surprised. I was surprised. Yeah, but they didn't. Yeah, I was surprised. And needless to say that when again they submitted the book uh, at that time they were thirty-five years old, maybe, right, including hiking as well. All right. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the book I was trying to uh, find. Not in the book, the paper, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So, and then uh, Aframovich and Shilinkov, they wanted basically to see what happens uh, above that uh, threshold, okay? Whether the, uh, 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 whether the resonance zones can cross, right? And what happens, okay, within the zones, right? And basically um, what they showed is that 
uh, once you're in the zone, right, there are options, right? Okay, that's called analogous principles, depending on certain conditions, right? Everything is nice or the torus can break down and can lead to the onset of, of hyperbolic subset, depending again on the number of symbols, right? So that's the, that's the theory. But if I go into um, uh, illustration, right? So you have a, so by construction, life on the torus is very special. If you have a stable periodic orbit on the torus, you have unstable too. That's what I was trying to illustrate here that uh, stable, unstable, they come always in pairs. So this is kind of one to three resonance. And what happens later on, okay, then the torus, if you remove uh, higher, then the torus becomes what's called non-smooth, right? So it doesn't look like a smooth invariant circle anymore. And then this is due to that kind of homoclinic uh, wiggles that start emerging, right, on a, at the settle, uh, again, on the boundary, this, this corresponds to this case. So it's a settle node. On, on the boundary, right? And you can see this uh, incoming separatrix enters kind of wiggling. Uh, uh, and, and as soon as it's going to touch the unstable or strongly stable manifold, or it touches the incoming separatrix, incoming manifold of the saddle north, right? Thoros breaks down. And while that, you have onset of chaos uh, nearby. And again, that's, again, that's the, the theory of the Thoros breakdown. Again, it's a theory, a phenological theory, right? And what you see here is uh, Shura's illustration how uh, the torus breaks down, uh, bifurcation occurs in a, in a one pushkin huxley type of model. So what you can see here, this is just a, uh, it's a, it's a cell periodic orbit or stable fixed point, right? Below this line. And then uh, it undergoes, it loses stability, right? And then you have invariant torus over here that's smooth and you can basically tell uh, uh what the multiple like multiplies here right the frequency of like multiplies what the angle is and then later on uh Shura was able to show that it becomes non-smooth like this right and then it breaks down okay and then torus becomes uh and then you enter let me think uh here you are out you are outside of the resonance zone and then when you enter the zone then you're gonna have uh, I don't know, six uh, stable points, which means it's an orbit of period six. And then in between there are settle, settle uh, uh, orbits in between them, right? And then Flake multipliers of these guys that used to be a real becomes complex conjugate because they want to move through to the left-hand side in a complex plane. So they have to become complex conjugate. And, and after that, oops, okay, these guys, uh, will, will undergo a period doubling cascade. Okay, so somewhere here. Okay, so you can see it, that's that's the theory. And the super interesting fact that it's so great that it, it's it, 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 the these applications it just follow the this these steps right just one by one. Amazing, amazing. Right, regardless of the of the applications that you consider. Right, it's just a, a big. Mind, so I don't have to copyright anyone. Okay, so then we're going to talk about the <clears throat> the Lorentz attractor. So that Leonid, that time again, Vadim was a numerical guy. So he did the computations. Vale, right, was an um, analytical guy, right. And so these are three publications. Again, we're going to talk about in a second. But at the very end, I'm going to mention Alexeyev, right. But but uh, at that time, uh, to to if you somebody wants, I mean, again, want to submit your paper to what's called uh, the Cloud of uh, Soviet Academy of Sciences, right? You have to uh, see either one of the Soviet academicians, right, or his left or right hand side, <coughs> and uh, kindly request that uh, they would uh, submit this paper on your behalf, right? That's how it worked in the, in the past. So, in these guys, in this case, Kapon of Grekov, he was an academician. And he had a certain quote on the number of submissions, right? So, so uh, again, uh, it's not like nowadays you, you pick your journal, right, and upload the files and then just uh, wait for the reviews. At that time, the, the procedure was much more sophisticated, right? I guess you, 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 you hear the irony in a sophistication comment. But bottom line is that, uh, okay, so he commissioned Bikov and Vale, and they published uh, these two papers 
Um, this was a short one, like, like PNAS, it's, this, this should be only four pages long. This is the extended version. Also, we mentioned in our review that it took almost five years for this paper to come out. Five years, okay, even though they submitted earlier. Okay, and, and but, but the bottom line is that uh, what they proposed that what uh, Tali just mentioned is called geometric model. And th that geometric model was so uh, easy to follow and easy to verify against numerically this time. Uh, not only how the Lorentz attractor emerges, right, in, in, in a system, what we call nowadays a Lorentz-like type, that diverse uh, collection of such systems, right? So basically, this is the idea of geometric of the geometric model, and meaning that uh, due to the symmetry, you, these cross sections, right, are mapped into these triangles, and along that direction, you have expansion, contraction, and that one. And this condition must be fulfilled initially. They have four conditions, but basically, the, the fourth uh, condition just uh, comes from the quadratic equation, and then. Uh, Leonid and uh, yeah, I should say Leonid, right? He proposed to uh, how the Lorentz attractor may bifurcate, right, and and kind of morph and become not Lorentz attractor, meaning that at this point it contains no stable orbit, so mathematically it's a pure periodic attractor, and then it starts containing, uh, start getting periodic orbits nearby, and due to what. Uh, transitions, right? And the first transition, this one, right? Basically means that you no longer have the strong expansion. So at the very end, you have these hooks and hooks, I mean, lead to hemoclinic tangences, hemoclinic tangents lead to settlement bifurcation, and then you got stable orbits nearby. And we're gonna talk about it in a second. Or option number two that is kind of uh, less known is that right in the middle here, you lose what's called strong contraction property. So that means that there will be a, a hole inside, and that hole contains, first of all, a cellular periodic orbit. Okay, nothing, nothing wrong with cellular periodic orbit, but that that cellular periodic orbit, due to the symmetry, right, it will undergo pitchfork bifurcation, and will become a stable, uh, stable figure eight periodic orbit, and that basically means that Lorentz attractor is about to, to die, right, and everything is going to go to. The stable orbit nearby. Okay, and the interesting fact that maybe because I know this story, right, uh, that was found in a, one particular model called Shimizu Morioka. But then the nonlinear optics uh, model that I mentioned today, it it has it has the same it has the same I mean the, the same fact. It has a what's called lacuna, and that lacuna contains stable orbit, and that stable orbit eventually becomes dominant over the dynamics of the system. Okay, so and. Uh, so they, uh, they uh, again, you got to understand, I mean, for, for, for younger researchers, right? Leonid was not very friendly with computers or LATIC, right? So basically he envisioned all these bifurcations, right? In, 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 his, in his mind, right? He, he didn't run simulations, right? And he didn't have to run simulations. And it was nice to have simulations to, to illustrate the theory, but the theory was in his uh, in theoretical constructions. And I was always surprised by that, right? How he, could foresee uh, the development of complex dynamics in system. And again, this is just the steps, okay? Hemoclinic butterfly, then you have the settle orbits, right? That's my illustration. These uh, settle orbits, they have stable manifolds like cylinders, right? And when separatrices enter this, this inside, uh, then you have no attractor. And then after that, you have a, okay, when they don't no longer gets inside, then you have a attractor. And la 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 la, and then you have T points, right? And what is shown here is the, I mean, again, Vadim computed this bifurcation curve that Tali mentioned, right? And the point is that, uh, okay, the Lorentz attractor in a in a Lorentz system, right, occupies just a tiny little region, just like over here, just just little one, and that's why I ask Taka to verify at this point, for example, outside of this point or over here around that point K, whether he his numerics can can uh, detect the presence of homoclinic tangences, right? And these homoclinic tangences soon will uh, result in these solid uh, color regions, which means these are stable orbits nearby, right? Okay. And basically, again, as I said, Lorentz attractor uh, occupies this little uh, region in the parameter space, right? 
And these are, again, these T points. And when I say T points, I mean Vadim Brikov, right? And the, the, the story of the T point is that as soon as you have a T point, its unfolding includes uh, homoclinic saddle focus bifurcation uh, curves. And in a 3D uh, system, this means you have homoclinic tangences and you have stable orbits nearby. So basically, and what I'm trying to say is that in this region over here, Lorentz attractor is a truly a chaotic attractor. And then it's no longer true under, uh, under that line. And that line corresponds to the tangencies, formation tension, tangencies of hooks in a, in a, in a uh, Schmitz miracle model. And after that, the attractor becomes what's called Lenny proposed a new notion of a quasi attractor. So quasi attractor is again, uh, it's a chaotic attractor that has hyperbolic subset plus. In addition, it may include uh, stable periodic orbits, but you never know for sure whether at this parameter value you have them or not. Okay, and that's what basically uh, uh, this picture demonstrates. So you have a Lorentz attractor here, quasi attractor here, and then what we call uh, Schilnicker flames. These are again inclination fleet bifurcations. So as you can see, these zones, right? They 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 uh, emerge right at these codimension two points, okay. And these codimension two points corresponds to these hooks or inclination fleet bifurcations on a on a on a longer homoclinic orbits, right? Okay. So I just listed a few of them. When you see, it, I mean, again, in the theory, this this zone should bend like that and enter from 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 above, okay. So everything works just like it should be in the theory, okay. And <laughs> again, this is inclination switch. I already mentioned that. Uh, again, this is my illustration. I'm, I'm going to skip this. So in the, I'll, I'll just focus on, on, on this, uh, what's called tent map. This for the Z variable. So numerically, it's going to, uh, once you have these hooks, right, that, that map is going to get this, uh, this tangency over here when derivative is zero. And that basically can lead to the, emergence of the stable orbits in a, in a, in a system, okay? And, and, and the, this, one more time, I, this was my final attempt to illustrate the inclination switch in case when uh, the settler index is le uh, greater than one, why you have, why you have these uh, Schilnicker flames, right? Why you have stable orbits nearby, you don't have them, that's kind of funny, right? <laughs> I should say, I want to say that you don't have them here, but the, you do. And the, the point is that uh, even though your saddle has a positive saddle value, nevertheless, right? Because of that inclination switch, the the, uh, the global map becomes a contraction, basically, right? Again, this the length of this interval is shorter than the original, the pre-image, right? Which means it becomes a contraction, and then you, this will uh, end up uh, with the appearance of the stable orbits nearby. Okay, so that's that's what I didn't want to discuss, right? But uh, uh, basically, back then, uh, we included this in our textbook. Uh, uh, Dima Leonid, I mean, Leonid, of course, led this conversation, right? He wanted to come, uh, come up with the example when you have a uh, subtle focus, right? But you don't have stable orbits. And that's what uh, Dima was talking about today, mostly, right? How to, how you play, how you use the, these different, uh, uh, contraction principles, right? So your global uh, your global uh, divergence is negative, right? But local divergence is sub sub divergence can be positive to make sure that uh, if you have this homoclinic uh, tangencies, right? R instead of resulting in a settlement bifurcation, they would produce settled settles, okay? Which means that extra uh, dimension is going to be unstable, right? That was the uh, that was the idea basically. Okay, and uh, even though this picture is sexy, and that one uh, uh, in in Kazakov, uh, Turaev, and Gonchenko, they basically demonstrated that this uh, this four dimensional system that has a, a subtle focus here, right, it has no stable orbits. Okay, all right. So now, um, how time wise, how how am I, what what about time? Do I still have time? Okay, so uh, let me just uh, illustrate two more uh, stories. One is called the blue sky. I know that uh, Vladik is in the, in the room, so but this time it's, it's not going to be a blue sky on the torus, but even though it's kind of close. So this configuration that was proposed by uh, 
Demo and Leonid. So a saddle mode uh, in 3D and then some stable manifold comes back uh, to the saddle mode from the node region, right? And, and with every revolution, the diameter of this pipe gets th thinner and thinner, right? It, it contracts narrower. And then as the saddle mode disappears, right? Due to contraction near the saddle mode, uh, it, this bifurcation will result in a stable periodic orbit. And then Kole Gavrilov basically designed this example right, and, uh, of this bifurcation. And, and then later on, uh, uh, we basically uh, proposed this bifurcation in a slow fast system because it's just easy to uh, use geometrical approach right, uh, to visualize how you, you can do it. So basically, you need to create this kind of tangency, right? And that tangency will give you the cell node bifurcation of periodic orbits, right? And because of this low fast disk hysteresis, right, you re-inject it back into this region, right? And the story goes in cycles over and over. And if this contraction is strong enough, right, this branch of the stable orbits, then this will result in a stable periodic orbits. And uh, uh, Lucky me, right? I knew that story, right? And then I designed, I didn't design actually, I have to correct myself. This occurs kind of naturally, right? In a, one of the Hodgkin Huxley models, as you can see, uh, just this GIF file, this is a saddle node stagnation, right? Two trajectories, I mean, they're independent, showing that you slow down and then come back. And then this interesting uh, uh, result by uh, Valera Lukyanov and Leonid, uh, it's the same, it's the same case, but this elephant has a unstable manifold that comes along the ears, right? Along this strongly stable manifold. And basically this is just a, a illustration of what you can see in a, in a cross section. So you may, you're gonna get this hemoclinic wiggles, right? And the idea is that as soon as cell node disappears, you have a hyperbolic subset here, right? And the interesting part is that if you, if you don't really care about fine details, but nevertheless, this bifurcation Again, you can place the saddle node right where you come back on a, on a two-dimensional stable manifold, right? And then you have a stable uh, orbit, this one, right? And then there is a saddle here in between. And when you come back to the saddle, right, you, you don't know how many times you're gonna uh, follow the blue orbit, this blue burst, right? Or eventually you're gonna end up on a, on a tractor. But if you split them away, right, then uh, they would give you by stability, right? This, Give file is supposed to illustrate. You have a stable attractor on the left, and then you have another stable attractor on the right in, a, in one of the Hodgkin Huxley type of systems. So, again, it, it basically shows that uh, the theory that Leonid and his students uh, developed and, and proposed, right, is highly practical, right? So, I, I come to the uh, almost conclusion, just I show you some, some interesting uh, historical photographs. Okay, this is Leon Chouard when uh, we visited his lab and started working on a paper, right? Dima looks like that he doesn't like uh, snow crabs. And, uh, and then Chouard managed to invite Leonid to Hawaii. At that time, this is Sharkovsky on the left. Do you know who's guy on the right? René Lazi is on the right. Uh, and that was taken in, in Hawaii. This is in Atlanta. We went to see this uh, exhibition, right? And I photoshopped this very right, just to say the Titan. Okay, and that's a family vacation in La Jolla in California in 72, I guess, right? Then um, uh, this picture was taken in, in uh, Leonid Brimovich's house. And as you can see, I mean, again, Leonid passed away, Joro Zaslavsky passed away, Vale passed away. Yeah, it's a very sad picture, right? And then uh, Grisha, I, I, I know he uh, used these photographs to show uh, when Leonid turned 75 at that time, uh, we had a party at his place, right? And then Seroja is here, right? Happy, happy camper. And then uh, Grisha, you can see yourself, right? Uh, so I don't know who said about, uh, I won't go comment on that. And this is one of the last uh, pictures uh, of Leonid when the Trinity came to visit him. And I truly appreciate uh, that uh, that moment. All right, again, uh, also taken in learning in which place, right? Uh, uh, Janomanski here, Vladimir Nikolaevich, hello, right? And 
it's 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 so weird that when I look at these photographs, right? I mean, I, I I now I can see that he was he was already sick, and we didn't even notice that. And I do know that when they came back, my parents came back to to Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, Grisha Osipov uh, emailed me saying that just saw Len Palch, he looked great. What America did to him, right? That's so naive, right? So blind. And and this was taken, I guess, in Kiev, right? In our friendly uh, Kiev, when uh, Leonid was awarded this Laventiev Award, this picture of Sharkovsky. Uh, this is the time when uh, uh, Adel Namaradin, right, was a disaster, right? And uh, it was still friendly environment, right? But again, as you can see, ruins. And then, uh, if I'm not, if I, uh, my dad turned seventy at this point, right? Lenny Belikov is here, and as we celebrate it in a in a conference room. And that was in Switzerland. Grish is here. I'm glad I mentioned Yuri Maestranka, uh, then Marty Hausler, right? Then Paul Glendening over here. Also, we just had a great time in Switzerland. Uh, then uh, uh, Yuri Kuznetsov, um, it, it was my first sabbatical, right? And uh, Dima managed to uh, organize a, a nomination, humble nomination for Leonid, right? And that was this secondary time when second time when he got this extension clicking here i guess this is to show off right if i'm not mistaken uh, it was taken in 2004 i have no idea where it's taken uh this is interesting it's just freaking amazing right it's called small world okay lenit here that's me young you're my strength uh, uh um jesus christ dima help me uh christian mira okay ought uh, 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 Neil, no, Neil uh, Rolf Abraham here, uh, Laura Garzini. This was a conference organized by Yanis Kivrikidis, right? Non invertible maps. I guess I was just invited as a as an interpreter of Leonid only, right? By Lodi Maestrank, uh, who else? Marty Golubisky is here. I'm looking at the fame, I mean, at, at the familiar faces. And then I have a meeting yesterday, right? It's Ken, uh, we discussed, we just got a grant for educational grant for mathematics in in biological sciences right and then i saw this guy and i couldn't believe it because i just i just uh took a picture of, of this photograph to present it today his name is dig uh mac mac i forgot his name right and he was at the meeting yesterday and i couldn't believe that and i said is it you and i shared this picture uh, with him and i said i'm gonna talk about this picture today okay so um that was, I don't even remember, it was like 95, 96, right? And who else is in this, No, you know, may know in this figure, all right? Yeah, that was, again, my mom, uh, and uh, we are in Cologne, uh, uh, Martin Houston again, Dmitry of Alexander Sergeyevich over there, uh, Vadim Semyonovich oh, and his wife, they passed away last, last year. Very, very sad too, right? And then it, apparently they had some some drinks already. I can see my, I can see the look of my dad. And then again, when uh, uh, he got this uh, Humboldt Award, he was visiting uh, the Wire Strice Institute. Dima was there at that time. And then it, that group was led by uh, Carl, not Carl. Dima, I don't remember. Not Carl. What, what, Klaus Schneider. Oh, Klaus Knaus. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bernard, is it you, right? Okay, Klaus, of course, right? Klaus. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Leva. Right, and uh, Vadim, oh, Vadim Andrei uh, was his... Uh, Vladimirov. Vladimirov. Oh, I know this, Leva. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Leva, Leva is here, as you can see, right? Uh, Alec and Misha, uh, just having fun. Okay. This is interesting. This is taken in 90, no, 2002. I didn't have a passport at that time to travel back to Russia, right? So I, I didn't I didn't see my parents for several years. And then I went to Brussels. And this is Solvay meeting. Solvay, this is Baron Solvay. And as you can see, this is uh, Ludwig Fadeev, this, this, this guy. Uh, Anosov. Uh, Anosov. Dima, <laughs> Dima, right? And this is my dad. And the reason it's a second uh, picture, right? 
because I'm going to talk about the, this private correspondence between these two distinguished gentlemen in, in a second. Okay, so that's how they wrote together. Okay, so guys, the, the, pro the purpose of this is just to show how the information was spread at that time and how they submitted the paper. I mean, I do know that Russian speaking uh, uh, people in the audience, right? You see, it says, Dear Leonia, uh, Pantragon uh, uh, either went to France or he's going to go to France for, for a month. So we can't, I can't contact him. I mean, Anosa was the right hand of Pantragon. So basically, uh, they try to uh, uh, they, they they try to manage uh, Lenin's paper to 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 get submitted to the uh, what's in English called PNAS here, Proceeding of National Academy of Sciences or the Club of Russian Soviet Academy of Sciences. Okay, and uh, and it says Kolmogorov, right? Let's try it through. Kolmogorov is not here either, so which means we can't we can't uh, even submit, I mean, start the, the submission, right? Because we have to wait, right? Two weeks before they, they come back. Or you can write, because I guess Alexeyev, he was the right hand of Kolmogorov, maybe I'm wrong. But you see, it, it says, maybe you should write what's called bag, I mean, again, letter to Alexeyev if, if it's needed. And again, dear Leonia, uh, a palace in your house, uh, uh, send me the preprints bifurcation of dynamical systems, dynamical morse systems, right? I didn't read it, but I suspect that it's very close to your interest. But, and that's why, okay, I'm, I'm, my question is, should I, uh, should I, I just want to say email, <laughs> should I mail these preprints to you so you can read and tell me whether it's interesting or not, right? Because I, I'm, I'm not a specialist, right? And Okay, and in case you can always uh, inquire with Pellis, and that's his address, that I, I see it on a, on a post mail. Okay, and another story, right, how you, uh, yeah, Lonya, uh, uh, I didn't get any, any packages, any uh, post from you, right, uh, or from you addressed to Pantragon. Again, that's how they submitted the papers. So either you have to, I mean, they, at that time they had to either mail, the submission right in using the post right or just travel on a train to moscow and, and submit in person right so no electronic submission whatsoever and uh okay then they talk about smail you're welcome to read it right now it's in english i guess uh, uh that smail just submitted his uh preprint right and i guess I, I would like to share it with you sinai just let me know that on the uh, that he he tried to push his paper forward, right? But again, it, it took almost a year or nine months for a single paper, right? So, but again, because of the quotes uh, that every academician had, you you uh, every academician had a, a a line, a queue of people begging or waiting or just waiting when the submission can be even considered before the publication, and it took almost a year, sometimes two years, and I said five years. To have a paper submitted, right? And then, uh, Slava, it's about you. If you're here, I, I, I wasn't able to, congr I mean, again, to cheer you up. I listened to you very carefully. Thank yeah, you. I was, I'm glad, I mean, because I, I was, I, I didn't come to your celebration, right? And I, given the moment, right, I would like to uh, thank you. heartily thank Slava, long, I mean, again, many returns, right? Good health. And it's, it's the, the, the conversation is about you, car talk. Uh, likely uh, following uh, Green has said that uh, uh, dissertations accepted before, right? I mean, they're going to be considered using the old rules or uh, that's why, as you can see, Green uh, wants to be, I mean, wants to submit his, uh, again, Slava knows this better than. But the funny part is that, I mean, again, what you, what you don't really know that, uh, I mean, again, even the PhD defen defenses in, in the Soviet times were tough. So you have to wait the quotes when you can submit it and wait until your your queue is up to right and and because of the quotes the very fast the very last sentence is just very funny i mean it's not funny it's historically it's it's a i don't want to say funny no no, no. it's just ironic look at this is it true that uh this breen over here uh, he's a mathematician breen whether he uh i mean is it possible that breen can submit 
your thesis at your council, right? PhD council in general. На самом деле защищался песен, а не Брин у нас. But it says Брин. But but one of line is that for English speaking, right? If you know what Брин is, it's a father of Sergey Брин, who is a founder of Google. Yes, yes. Can you can you imagine that right now? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a seventy-five, right? Again. Uh, they had quotes, and then because of the, I mean, I don't want to go into some 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 uh, issues, right? It it was tough for certain for certain uh, people to to get defended, right? On I time. Mean, or, quotes. I mean, what? Uh, I mean, <laughs> that was like that. No, I mean, we don't have to. I mean, again, yeah, we, we don't, don't have, have to, to, but that was what what it was. No, I'm I'm just saying this is just an irony, right? And I, I knew that Slava yes. knows yes. Uh, knows the answers to that, right? Of course. And basically, this is just the, it's the last slide of my presentation, I guess, right? And on this note, I would like to end up. And again, thank you, everyone. Uh, I mean, I'm not a part of the organizing committee, but I'm glad that the committee let me uh, speak today. Right? It just I covered what I believe uh, is is uh, kind of. Uh, uh, important from the from the uh, in in Leonid's uh, scientific legacy, right? That again, it's just a little fraction, just the type of the iceberg that I mentioned, and I keep saying this over and over that uh, people know the very very tiny uh, tip of the iceberg, right? What was done uh, in his in his uh, in his school in Nizhny Novgorod back then. It's it's funny that. People rediscover these results almost 50, 60 years later, right? How 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 strong the inertia is indeed. All right, but on the, let me end up on a cheerful note that you're welcome to get our uh, very first, okay, I go to the very first slide. So hopefully it will be, uh, it will come out. Talk. It will come out soon, right? And you're welcome to read it. And it's it's well written, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Andre. Very interesting. Oh, very nice talk. Good. Very nice. I hope that you send. You will send us presentation. All right. By the way, I, I heard that I you, will be you record the. Uh, the converse, I mean, again, the, the talks, right? Maybe you should let them let us know how we can have access to them, because my family wants to see. <laughs> uh, in 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 February, February. Mm -hmm. we all we all planning to to come, the whole family. So my mom is going to turn eighty five in February, so that's that's the plan. Okay, we'll see. We'll see, I mean, how COVID uh, uh, is going to affect the, the travel in, 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 in oh, next possible year. Possible to come in autumn. Say it again? Yeah. Is it possible now? I mean, why, why not? Now you can travel. I mean, now it's, it's easy breezy. Now it's easy breezy. Good to know. I mean, you cannot come, Misha. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> right? Unfortunately, my our grandmas cannot come here because they can't get visas anymore. But I mean, just get, I mean, buy tickets and travel. I mean, lucky, lucky me. I don't have to come back to to, to Russia to get my Russian passport. Otherwise, I would be in in, in trouble. All right, Sereja, where are you? Gonya. Он сейчас подключится, у него компьютер вырубился. Не звонил. Он сначала вырубился, а потом стал обновляться. Он сейчас компьютер старше Okay, Dima, you organize, right? Are you? Yes, but uh, Gon I mean, we all know that Gonchenko is the organizer. Right? Okay, so Tali is still let's here. Let's not pretend. Yeah. I'm just okay. Bernard's still here, so we 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 keep talking English, right? Okay. Jan is here too, right? You begin New Year celebration or Christmas? 
I guess I have heard enough closings of conferences that you can do it in <laughs> Russian and it will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 oh, I'm just, I just hope that one day, I mean, it's going to be over soon, right? It, enough of Russian, I mean, no, the, on, enough of online meetings, right? Enough of online meetings. Well, let's wait on Goni, right? He very likely he's going to have uh, the, some concluding remarks. But what I can do, I can con convert this presentation in the PDF and share. Okay, I'll, I'll send it to Goni if you want. Because some, some comments, Slav, about you are also interesting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, David. I can see some of my students here. Dima. Sergio went for work. No, no, no. He's just offline. Dima. Yes. Given that your mega, right? Yeah. Bernard likes this mega. Given that your mega was renewed, are we going to have a meeting in the summer? Uh, what do you mean? Shilnikov conference, summer conference. Uh, we'll have a. Or they're unrelated. We have a big dynamical system. Meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. You absolutely have. You, Where just... you are uh, one of the presenters. Oh, yeah, I forgot about <laughs> so that. Just... <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not about money. It's about uh, epidemic, of course, obviously. Yeah, but unless unless you, you saw that, right? Maybe I shouldn't say that, but you saw that letter that some of the uh, Russian mathematicians signed up to petition to delay the the, the Congress in Saint Petersburg, right? Because of the one of the uh, kids was imprisoned. Yes, but uh, yeah, 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 I know, but it's uh, it's an old story, and it looks like it's well, we will see. Okay. And what about you, Andre? Did you register it? About? Uh, this Congress in Petersburg. Conference? What conference? Or the petition? No, I, con Congress in St. Petersburg. Uh, no, Misha. I kind of like Soccer World Cup more than that. Jimmy <laughs> Porochi. <laughs> Yeah, I think Dima can close it. Or Lerman can. All right, unless, uh, unless uh, you have something. Okay, okay. okay. unless you guys have, some, have something to say. Dear colleagues, our Dima. chairman <laughs> is out. He's went because, offline. Because his computer is out. Who is out? Lerman Starishina. Uh, so I propose to uh, to close our meeting. To my mind, the meeting was very interesting and the program was fantastic. And uh, I am very glad uh, that we can uh, come together and uh, listen each other and uh, to know about new results. I hope we are lucky to be here. And uh, again, we, we try to, to be here in next year. As, as Ju said, <laughs> next year in, in, in Nizhny Novgorod. <laughs> I Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you for all speaker for very interesting talks. Thank you very much. And until next time, thanks for all the work you put in this. Okay. It was nice to, nice to see conference. you, Bernard, after so many years, by the way. What? I said it was nice to see you after so many years. Yes. yes. From a distance. Yeah. Well, you, you, you are free to say something. But, <laughs> Come on, no, 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 I'm too no old. No drinking that. here, right? I'm too old for that. <laughs> it's too early. So next time, next. take good care and thank you very much.
begin causing banquet. А, Таня, а у нас есть... А, а давайте выключим запись.